Press Corps presents Foxhole Newsreels, correspondence from across the battlefields of the Foxhole War. All hell breaks loose across multiple fronts as isolated skirmishes spiral into grand engagements. Brave wardens charge into the killing fields under heavy howitzer fire as courageous colonials storm the bloody beaches amid a hail of bullets. The fighting is fresh for both sides as armies have only just begun to mobilize, determined to meet the many dangers ahead with vigor and energy. Since the outbreak of war on Wednesday, March 14th, both factions have been raising regiments of new recruits non-stop, ensuring no short supply of trigger fingers and foot soldiers. At Training Island, helpful veterans teach new recruits the basics of combat. Here, a trainee learns to assemble and load her carbine. Here, the importance of stances is taught, particularly the balance between mobility, profile, and accuracy. Here, budding engineers learn the importance and the art of placing structures down in smart locations. But training or not, nothing can prepare a recruit for the enormity and complexity of the war they're about to join. New to this series of fighting is the pervasive connectedness of the war effort, leading troops on both sides to dub it the One World War. From Veronic Coast to the Endless Shore, from Westgate to the Umbral Wildwoods, from these clashes on the mainland to fights in far-flung territories such as Tempest Island and Fisherman's Row, the shadow of war has left no part of the landscape untouched. Even Mooring County, an area of the map long left alone, is now home to the familiar hallmarks of conflict. Trenches, troops, bullets, and bodies. Armies have begun moving in mass across regional lines for wide flanking maneuvers as combat engineers are adapting to the new attack lanes with more fluid, hands-on fortifications stretching across kilometers of land. Meanwhile, logistics companies are converting swaths of captured territory into industrial districts, churning out fuel and materials for front lines far from the factories. And with more convoys crossing longer roads, the new opportunities for raiding necessitates the creation of a tighter security infrastructure to protect a ballooning demand for equipment. As the theater of war grows ever more dynamic, more men and women will be needed for more vital tasks, with even more expected of every single one. Who will meet the demand? Who will answer the call? With shiny new war memorials ready to be eternally inscribed with the names of the victors, neither faction is stepping down or slowing down. This is the Foxhole War. This is Foxhole.